I should have had Carolyn come up here too. <laughs> and, and Tinka. Well, good morning. I am overwhelmed. I'm overflowing. I, I'm, I'm used up. I'm refreshed. <laughs> yes! That's, that's what it is. And there's more of that to come. There's no way I could have made it through last week. It was a work of God. It was crazy, long, short, fast, slow, busy. And this week coming up, it's going to be twice that. Whatever that is. Pray for me. Be excited with me. Dying to self is crazy living and I'm dying to live some more. Please, let's turn to Luke 9, 56. I know I'm not the only one to experience this abundant life this past week. There were so many that volunteered and participated to make this week fantastic. And I sense you all put your life on hold. And, you know, it's, it's like when you're watching an interesting show on television and, and you pause it to go on a Hawaiian vacation. Okay? Uh, interesting movies are, over, over, are overrated in that context. You know, would you agree? I'd put an interesting movie on pause any day for that Hawaiian vacation. If it suddenly became available. <laughs> interesting lives are overrated in the, context, in the context of living for Christ. There's no comparison. The problem most people have is, is the will to push the pause. You know, we were in Romans 5 last week looking at reconciliation. We read about the prodigal son and how his interesting life went south. And how the elder son probably needed to move out of the house and uh, cut, his, the apron, cut loose from the apron strings of mommy. Um, the abundant life of Christ isn't stagnating in stuffy legalism. Nor is it chasing fleshly desires under perceived grace policy. It's putting that life on pause. <laughs> okay, okay, more than that. It is putting that old life to death. In Luke 9, 56, Jesus, is, went and they, Jesus was with his disciples and they went into another village. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, foxes have holes, birds of the, net, of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. But the man replied, Lord, first let me go bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow or looks and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. There was three of them that had a desire to follow Jesus. What was holding them back? You know, following Jesus is a death wish. And Jesus makes it clear. Following Jesus is, is chasing desires, but, but not the desires of the flesh, whether that fleshly desire is immorality or legalism. Desires have a lot of pull. I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff. Hey, I, I don't want to let go of this stuff. And, and it's, just like that, it's just like that movie. We get so engrossed in that movie and we miss out on the Hawaiian vacation because we can't get ourselves to push the pause button. We desire to live a comfortable life. Jesus didn't have a place to lay his head. We, we desire to be there for our families, you know, especially when our loved ones pass on. We want to we be there for them. We desire to keep a handle on our lives and control the trajectory and, and, and the speed and, and the rate at which we're going and, and in, in the following of Jesus. You know, Jesus has a particular narrow way for his kingdom. 
When we truly entrust our lives to Jesus, we don't follow him on our own terms. Please, let's turn to Romans 6. You know, in today's age, we, we have GPS to, to, to guide and uh, direct our, our, our equipment down the field so we can plow straight rows and make sure we got every little corner of them. But uh, back in the day, if you wanted straight rows when you're plowing with, a, with oxen or, or uh, horses, even, even a tractor back in the day, you had to fix your eye way off in the distance and uh, make sure that you didn't turn to the left or the right. I, um, I heard one farmer, he, he fixed his eyes on an object in the distance and it was a deer. And <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't, didn't quite go in a straight line, but uh, we fix our eyes on Jesus. And he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He, he's our author and the finisher of our faith. You know, Jesus certainly was not a high-pressure salesman, okay? You know, if you buy this, you'll have everything. No. If anything, he, he, he made sure that people knew, hey, there's a cost involved. And if you're going to run on board, I don't, I don't want you guys to, to think that this is going to be an easy road. Narrow is the gate. Small is the gate. Narrow is the road. You know, he disclosed exactly what following him was about. You know, dual desires would duel against each other. And like Jesus once said, you cannot serve both God and mammon. Following Jesus is a death wish, not a band-aid, to continue following our own desires just under the umbrella of his grace. Grace puts to death those counterfeit desires Seeking to counterfeit, seeking counterfeit means to artificially sustain life. And then grace brings to life a true desire that seeks real means to eternal abundant life. Romans 6, starting with verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were, Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with. That we should no longer live or no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died... He died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. You know, if I, if I read all the scripture relating to this idea of dying to yourself, taking up the cross and, and living to Christ, you know, I, I'd probably spend the rest of today reading passage after passage after passage, you know, and it, and it, it actually took me two days to, to get through them all. But since I, and, and since I didn't have enough time to do my sermon this week, I, 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 I probably... I was tempted to just read the passages and say, okay, it's 11 o'clock, it's time to go home. Um, and it would probably have been the best sermon I ever preached. This topic was written often for a reason. It's not hard to pick out the dying trend of this world. You know, of course, it, we, we know that the cemeteries always are getting new customers, but we also have walking dead all over today. You know, they, they walk the streets uh, with, with wired, with their ears wired and, and uh, with a little device in their hands, you know. You, and, and it's a wonder they even navigate uh, um, 
through life sometimes. They go to dinner with a real life person across the table from them. And they look intently at the smartphone. You know, if the person across from the table is, is, is up on this and, and, and wants them, you know, is saying, hey, you focus on me. If they get a little buzz in their pocket, emergency bathroom break so that they can take that device out as soon as they get in the bathroom and say, okay, who texted, who called, you, you know, uh, who, who updated their Facebook page, whatever. Um, the other day, the other day, a person walked into the doc doctor's office, all wired up, and they never heard the nurse call their name. The nurse ran frantically to the doctor's room where he's visiting a, another patient, and, and, and she screamed, come quick, come quick, the patient you're going to see next just, just died right in, it, right in the waiting room. The doctor quickly checked them out, and it was too late. Explain to me what happened, demanded the doctor. The nurse told them, oh, they, 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 they couldn't hear uh, me when I announced that they were next. And all I did was take out the earplugs and pretty soon, and within moments, they, they were gone. They quit breathing. The doctor quickly put the earbud up to his ears and he just heard one word. About every four seconds, breathe. <laughs> breathe. <laughs> the patient just happened to be blonde. Um, <laughs> what is the device that we are dependent on to breathe? What is the device, activity, substance, or relationship that will kill us if we get unplugged? You know, you know, so many times we can't even hear the great physician calling us to follow him because we're too plugged into artificial life support. Unplugging from the, these devices, activities, substances, or relationships is a death wish. Yes. But it is a death wish for the dead life and a faith in the grace that gives real life. You know, how do we know that we're dead? Do dead people know that they're dead? Good question, huh? Have you ever had to bury a pet? You know, I had a pet die. You know, a sad deal, but, uh, you know, if you were to, to wave their favorite treat in front of their nose, you know, they probably wouldn't respond. You know, if you took their, their favorite squeaky toy and, squeaky, 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 come on, come on, you know, Rover or, 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 or Penny or whatever, you know, and they, they, they'd, they'd just lay there. They'd be motionless. They wouldn't respond. Verse 7 says, because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Uh, we're going to look at uh, Colossians 3, 1 next. Do dead people sin? Do dead people sin? How, do dead people do anything? <laughs> Silly question, huh? You know, if an alcoholic were to die... You could, you could pop open a bottle right in front of him. And he wouldn't respond. You, you, can, even, you can even put it under his nose. You know, and he could... Well, he couldn't smell the vapor, but you know, he, he wouldn't respond. Whatever the sense of life or sin may have been, you know, you could, you could display a, a, a pornographic material or turn the, on the QVC channel. Uh, start talking about some juicy details about the next neighbor next door. Whatever it is, whatever their vice is, that would normally have gotten them going, 
You know, you can even start talking politics and bashing the president or something. But there's nothing that will get that dead person to stir, respond, or show any life. They're stone cold dead. Are you following me? Verse 3 of, uh, that we just read, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we, were if we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. And then verse 7 again, because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. How do you know you are dead? Do dead people know they are dead? You know, are we dying and continuing? Are we dying to continue dying? Are we dying to live? You know, I don't want to be on the artificial support, life support system of this world. You know, it takes faith to follow Jesus. It, it, it takes faith to unplug from the dependence that we place on the devices, the substances, and the desires or relationships of this world. It takes faith to be graciously euthanized from death so that we can be graciously resurrected to new life. In Colossians 3, starting with verse 1, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impure lust, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived. But now you must rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off the old self with its practices and put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge and the image of his creator. Please let's turn to John 12, 23. You know, how do we know that we're dead to sin? You know, the right method for checking this out is not going to, 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 the, to the old sin and saying, okay, let's see if I can arise from this anymore, okay? That's a bad idea. You know, if, if you're an alcoholic, you don't, you don't go to, to the bar and say, okay, let's see if I'm, I'm tempted. Oh, I must be dead. No, that's bad, bad, bad idea. Uh, the right method is to see if we are living in the Spirit and being renewed in the image of Jesus. You know, it's like the seed in the ground. The proof that the seed died is not going and finding out to see if it's dead. It's not going out and digging up all of, all of the wheat that you've planted in your field. Oh man, I wonder if it died and, and, and if it's going to grow. You, you, no. Wait till it sprouts. And when it sprouts, when, when that green starts pushing itself off out of the soil and then when it starts growing into a plant, then you know, then you know that that kernel that you planted is dead and dying because the life has begun. When we entrust our lives to Christ, we are buried with Him. He that is dead is freed from sin. The proof that we are dead to sin is that we are alive to Christ, growing in Christ, displaying the fruit of Christ, and transforming to the image of Christ. In John 12, 23, it says, Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. 
Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant will also be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. You know, following Jesus is all in and on his terms. You know, at VBS, we have a song every year uh, that talks about the ABCs. A. Okay, admit to God you're a sinner and repent. B, believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And C, confess, confess your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. You know, that's where your life begins. And, and, and Paul says that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Maybe you're still suffering from your sin. We all are. And John says, you know, if you say you're without sin, you're a liar. But are we living? As that seed is the, the whole and everything is, is decaying and the life is springing out, is that our proof? That is our proof that we have begun a new life. And he that has begun a good work in us will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And that dying hole is getting smaller and smaller. It, it, Jesus didn't say, or it's not that we're going to be sinless, but we're going to sin less and less and less. And we're going to give glory to God more and more and more. And pretty soon we're going to provide the fruits like joy, peace of the Spirit. Long-suffering, all that stuff. I reckon it with being baptized with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, following Jesus is a complete surrender of the body, soul, and spirit to God. To die to self, die to death, and live to God, live to life. Buried and resurrected. You know, I hope that each one of us is dying to live. Let's pray. Lord God, we just thank you so much for seeing us, Lord, for, for, for starting us out in the first place and, and, and seeing in us when you created us a, a relationship. That's why you created us, to have a relationship with you. Lord, you already knew we were going to mess up before the beginning of time, before you created us, and you already purposed Jesus that he would come and he would, he would live a perfect life and that he would pay the price for our sins. Lord, we thank you for that immensely. But Lord, help us to respond to that by admitting we're a sinner, repenting, and believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and, and confessing that Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord of our lives. So that we can unplug from the sin and the world and the devil and even ourselves, the flesh, and live to you. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.